Okay, now it's the evening of December 14th. Idea that my cousin Lisa is suddenly in the hospital with some unknown disease. There is a dream about something to do with the self family maybe keeping me locked. At the end of the dream, I hear Chris say, Lisa is still in the hospital with some kind of shock, maybe septic shock. Then he, then he says, and she died today. In the middle part of this dream, it seems like I'm getting ready to marry Willie, though we haven't lived together for at least a year. This is something being arranged by the self family. Image of lamp, lamp light. So I, I'm closing my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a bright lamp or lamp light shining. Sticks, cracks. So I want to talk about the self family for a minute. Back when I was doing Ancestry.com, you know, when I found this bizarre to me, it was a very bizarre fact that my fifth grade teacher, Jeff Self, was married to the other fifth grade teacher, Susan Nichols' sister, um, Patricia Banducci. Yeah, since then, I've found that lots and lots of links to the Banducci family um, in California, um, not just in Eureka, but in other parts of California and, you know, Marino's Club and other types of... Oh, and um, The Hungry Eye in San Francisco, right? Hungry Eye in San Francisco, so North Beach. So Jeff Self, for his part, his family, you know, the Banducci family is, a, you know, fairly recent Italian immigrants. By fairly recent, I mean late 1800s. Jeff Self has an interesting family history to me because he seems to be descended largely from early California pioneers, especially around gold country. And the names in his family tree are also interesting because, you know, his mother is a Cheney. Her name's Joan Cheney. Um, the father has, or father has names like Lynch and Rice in, the, in his family tree. So Rice is a significant name here, especially with regards to medical manipulations. And Guthrie, Erica Schlager worked at the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis. So Rice, Lynch, Guthrie, those are all, and Cheney, you know, and then there's Sellers and Jaeger as well. But, you know, these, and Foster. Foster is an interesting name because there's somebody named Michelle Foster who lives up in Canada who is associated with this group Evolt, who was always really nasty to me. And for some reason, Bar I saw that Barack Obama was actually following her on Twitter. For some reason, she lives in Toronto. I mean, what what's up with that? Um, I mean given Obama follows a lot of people on Twitter, but it's not like he was following me on Twitter or anything, even when I was following him. But he, yet he's he's following Michelle Foster, you know, this random person up in Toronto, Canada. And other people linked with Evolt as well. So um, how about Jeff Self? I was just thinking this morning about Jeff Self and the types of lesson plans that he did. I mean, I thought he was a great teacher. You know, he was all into the self-esteem building stuff. But... He did a couple things that threw me for a loop, which I now think he did deliberately. Um, and I did see him at least once later on, and he kind of gave me a cold shoulder. But um, When I was first researching MK Ultra and reading different stuff about MK Ultra online, now given I now know that a lot of stuff is disinformation, so you know it's weird when you find out a new piece of information, you you have to kind of go back and sift through all the old things that you've already established in your head and figure out if it still fits into your new what you now understand. Um, but he had these different um, teaching systems that he went through, and one of them I saw when I was reading about MK Ultra, I saw. The same type of thing being described as part of MK Ultra, which through the CIA, specifically a CIA program, MK Ultra. Okay, and not not sort of the the morphine that's happened and gone through. I mean, even the police are doing mind control now. Um, but um, I wish I could remember what, but I feel like that memory 
has been edited or something because all of a sudden now I can't remember any of this. I just remember that that sort of aha moment. Now, this was years ago and years before I knew anything weird was going on with me. Years before I understood that MKUltra had anything to do with my own life. Um, it was just a, a something I noticed in passing. But my suspicion is, you know, especially with these names Rice linked in here, that he is, his family's linked with um, underground activities having to do with medicine, like MKUltra. Another thing about this particular family line, so this, some of these family members, like, um, like, okay, so this guy, Cornelius Yeager, was born in, was died in 1895 in Fresno. Um, Willows Glen, California, Frank Marion Yeager in 1908 died in Willows Glen, California. That's basically San Jose. So that's potential links to San Jose, to Menlo Park, and places like that. Um, in Chris's family, Chris's great great grandfather um, is linked both to. Um, the Longview, Washington area, and to um, Northern California, either Salinas or Salida or both. But when he died, his obituary is strange. Like, it doesn't mention family members that it would I would expect it to mention, for example, his wife and some of his kids. So there's something strange about him. His, him, his name was James Newman. Was he estranged from part of his family? Or was the obituary simply written to obliterate part of his family. He too was described as a California pioneer. So another thing I did then is I, you know, looked up Mr. Self on um, the white pages and I saw that he has, a, it looks like a daughter named Kate Self and guess where she lives? Lad's Edition, Portland. In other words, she lives, um, you know, just a few steps away from my where my daughter attended elementary school. And um, before that, she was living in Corvallis. Where's Corvallis? Corvallis is where Courtney Love is from, where Courtney Love's mother still lives. Courtney Love's mother, again, being a psychologist or psychiatrist, one of those things. Um, so there's this link to psychiatry medicine and um, underground stuff. Now, there's a garbage truck outside, but I'm going to continue. Um, so, this family is a potential link to the um, Delaplane family, because Delaplane has the same type of roots, California gold country roots, uh, and remember, the California Gold Rush was sort of a genocide program. I mean, I don't know if it was a program, but it was ge definitely a genocidal. Um, so it's possible that people came over for the Gold Rush specifically with the intent of destroying um, Native Americans in California. Um, and that whatever kinds of instructions were passed down in the family, that's the ultimate goal. Um, so Delaplane is potentially linked to self through a few different ways. Delaplane, Stanton Delaplane was very closely linked to North Beach, San Francisco. That's where CIA did their Operation Midnight Climax, kicked off the, you know, flower power. I, I think the CIA kicked off flower power. Um, maybe that's why I got that, you're so vicious, you hit me with a flower. And that flower game that people say are linked with the Nazis that were brought over, um, where, you know, she loves me, she loves me not. There, There is more than one person that has claimed that they made children do the flower game, and if they landed on she loves me not, the child would be killed in front of other children in order, order to traumatize the other children. That the CIA went so heavy into this trauma-based mind control, they were killing children in front of other children in order to create this trauma. They still do it, but it's done, It they make it look like accidents or diseases now. Um, so, um, they're not just children, but, I mean... 
um, family members. And by they, I don't necessarily mean the CIA, but maybe. Um, This also is potential linked to Canada. I, th I feel that the MK Ultra links and the and the drug links, and it's a link to heroin. The drug links, um, not just LSD, but other drugs, including things like methamphetamine and heroin, um, because what they seem to be really interested in is how they can use um, electronic weapons to exploit uh, altered states of consciousness. So I could be like altered states of consciousness could be like sleep when they're sending dreams, half-wake states where you can get visions more easily, um, or drug states. So different types of drug states can be exploited in different ways. Um, marijuana is a really interesting one this way, actually, because I think that marijuana um, can be used to enhance telepathy. That's what it appears to me. It's kind of interesting that they are so anti-marijuana, um, considering all these other drugs that they're involved with. Um, but the thing about this is, is this part of California was also, um, marijuana growing country too. So, you know, all these, where do you untangle the threads? Where does one thread start and the other thread end or... Now, that's the question I have. But the whole thing with North Beach, Stanton Delaplane, um, California Gold Country, um, attacks on Native Americans, including covert attacks, um, confidence games in which you, you know, win people's confidence and then kneecap them later. You know, this is all in operation. And it's all pre... It's all pre-CIA. It goes back. I mean, I can look at my daughter's father's family members and see that they were surrounded by people like from Germany and stuff. So it looks to me like people moved specifically to surround the Native Americans that were being focused on in this game and influence them. And, you know, it's this is a multi-generational confidence game. So now we're in the night of the 15th. I get all this stuff about Brooke. Someone using Brooke to manipulate or control her father, Willie. I hear the Beatles song, It Won't Be Long. This concept comes to me about Cobain being forced to suicide while he was seeking divorce from Courtney. You know, that is actually important. At the first, I didn't think necessarily that, you know, because everybody was saying it's interesting because of this misdirection that's been going on oh, Courtney killed Kurt because she didn't want him to divorce her and she wanted to, you know, I mean, I guess that's a plausible, that's a plausible motive. But, um, and in fact, it might have played into it a little bit because she did write that <laughs> song where she said, you want a part of me, I'm not selling cheap. So there's this um, double mean of a part. You want to, you want to get rid of me? I'm not selling sheep. And this is also relevant to my situation because I want to get rid of Courtney out of the sky above me because Courtney is not going to help me. She's only going to just traffic off my ass, right? She's going to say, well, how much are you going to pay me to do this? Or how much are you going to pay me to do that? Or what are you going to give me to do this? Or what are you going to give me to do that? That's what she's going to do. She's going to negotiate as long as she's permitted to negotiate and as she shouldn't be permitted, she shouldn't even be there. I mean, all these people, none of these people, I can't think of anybody that I know of that has a drone in the sky that has my best interests at heart by any means. They only, they only went, they only <laughs> got to this position because they had, um, ill intentions. That's the whole reason they even came into our lives. And, if there were any exceptions to that, they were turned by the brutality of the system. So that means that, you know, I want to get rid of Courtney, okay? Um, that puts me and my daughter and Chris and everybody in danger as long as she's weaponized. So how do I de-weaponize her? 
And this whole thing that went on with Mary Lou Lord, I, I, um, I'm going to try to respect her wishes as much as possible, but, um, I think Courtney instigated that with mind control. Cobain's suicide scene, someone picking up moving objects, crumpled paper or towels and two toilet paper tubes. So it's as if somebody's changed the staging of the suicide scene before it was photographed and moved, among other things, two toilet paper tubes. The interesting thing about the Cobain suicide scene is the Seattle police, to their credit, did start to publish photos of it in 2014, 20 years after the fact. And you saw a lot in those photos that were was never re revealed before. It was never revealed before that I know of that this suicide note was written on a restaurant placemat. It was never re revealed before 2014 that I know of that the suicide note was written in red pen. It was never revealed before 2014 that I know of that he burned a hole through the suicide note with a cigarette and affixed it to a potted plant with a red pen. And so on. There are other things that were described, but those things I never heard described or saw before 2014. Then, my understanding, what I heard was um, Courtney and Francis asked the police to stop publishing photos. You know, because of their delicate sensibilities. I don't think it was so much the delicate... I mean, I'm not speaking for Francis at all, but as far as Courtney goes... No, because it was incriminating. The hole burned through the... When I first saw the hole burned through the... Um, Suicide note, I thought that, okay, that hole could be referring to the same thing that Courtney named her ba band after hole and this whole concept of the hole, not necessarily about Courtney herself, but now I think it's actually about Courtney herself. And also about the use of cigarettes and burning children in MK Ultra. And so he wrote about that in a song, you know, Burn My Arm on Accident. Um, also possibly a reference to Mark Arm. Um, that happened to me. I had my arm burnt by a cigarette, seemingly on accident. Um, it probably wasn't actually an accident. Um, and then I found out later that um, in L.A., punk rockers were doing this thing called germs burns, where they were burning each other with cigarettes. So German, you know, a lot of this is linked to Germans, Nazis, but also pre-Nazis, just Germany in general. Trauma-based mind control. Um, and I say that because there's a lot of, seems to be a lot of German Jews who are involved in this as well. Number two and number six. Band coming out, animated discussion of their amps. Someone named Buckingham Taylor. Is there someone, okay, I did not Google this. Is there someone really named Buckingham Taylor or is this about somebody who killed somebody named Buckingham? There's a Taylor called Buckingham Taylors in Buckingham, England. There's somebody writing about Lindsay Buckingham playing a Taylor guitar. Since Courtney comes up in this, there might be a Fleetwood Mac link. Then I get DoorDash and DoorDash Pharmacy, specifically. One thirty-eight a.m. See someone, maybe at a bar. He's wearing Avenue of the Giants t-shirt. I try to see the shirt. See, it's 1986. I say I think I was at that one, at that Avenue of the Giants Marathon. It's about the Avenue of the Giants Marathon, specifically. The guy seems to know about me, know my dad, sees my dad as an athlete. Something about my dad spreading horse, hose, horse manure around at our home in Freshwater. My dad was a marathon runner. My dad formed the Six Rivers Running Club with his running buddies, Six Rivers Running Club. They started the Avenue of the Giants Marathon in 1971. I know I'm pretty certain I was not at the Avenue of the Giants Marathon in 1986 personally, but the fact that I say that I think I was at that one suggests that something was going on as far as um, surveillance trafficking or some other kind of deals done with regards to me. 
Um, my dad would actually pick up the horse manure and compost it rather than spreading it around. But this is probably a metaphor for something. Next one is, I drink at a bar with Chris in the sky. I'm hearing a Barney Stinson voice. There's some kind of link to the Dandy Warhols. A bar is, now as I'm writing this, I get a sense of the of Melissa Villasenor's voice, Saturday Night Live. Bar is closing, wanting to continue, Chris wanting to continue drinking. I have one drink. They want me to drive them to this place that serves dessert drinks. I have a trailer on my vehicle. Seems like I have to take the trailer off to drive anybody anywhere. If I drove them to this place far away, I'd have to drive them back, then drive them home. Chris is sort of like Barney Stinson here. He's not taking no for an answer. In other words, I'm trying to say no, I can't really do this. Uh, and he's just acting like he doesn't even hear me. Like no is not even an option. Walking out of the bar, I'm carrying a glass of water. And it really doesn't seem like Chris at this point. It's more like Barney Stinson, this character in How I Met Your Mother. So Barney Stinson is a character. He's a womanizer type character. He always dresses in suits. Walking out of a bar, I'm carrying a glass of water. This glass, it's like a chimney glass, right? It formerly held my drink. So what happened was I'm there. we have to leave the bar. I dump the last little bit of the drink out and I fill the glass with water. As I'm leaving the bar, I wonder if there will be traces of alcohol in the water. So this might have, I, you know, um, I think this is also a match because once I, I drew this picture of the glass, I had this focus on that, on what the glass looked like. I, I recognized a link to another dream from the 80, 80s linked to doctors and pharmacies. So I'm going to come back to that. Um, as far as this goes, this really brings back a memory of when I first met Chris, when he was interested in me romantically, but before we were going out and he was, I think, trying to detox off of heroin or something. And, um, right now he's in a pretty vulnerable place because he's trying to get off of methadone and alcohol seems to be a gateway drug for him. Um, and I'm concerned that they're going to come back and do these relapse attacks on him again if I can't stop this from happening. I need to stop this from happening. I need to stop Chris from being attacked with these frequency-based weapons. Um, but at this time, he was detoxing off of heroin, and he was at this bar drinking, and this was in 2009, and it was called The Matador, and he runs into Courtney Taylor Taylor there. Okay, well, that's interesting. This name Taylor, Buckingham Taylor, Courtney Taylor. Um, I've talked about how there's, in Portland, there's this Taylor Street that's kind of divided into two in several different places. So I kind of thought, well, that's partly why it's Taylor Taylor. But it's also this idea of Courtney Taylor Taylor cutting, you know, the Taylor cutting the cutter or something like that. It's kind of. Um, so his re real name is Courtney Taylor, but he changed it to Courtney Taylor Taylor with a double last name. Anyway, he runs into, Chris runs into Courtney Taylor Taylor at this bar, you know, seemingly randomly. And um, Taylor is feeding Chris all these lines that are intended to push Chris's buttons. Um, talking about why he thought Chris never got famous and so forth and so on. Um, saying he got fat maybe criticizing his music and things like that. Um, so Chris has heard this kind of stuff his whole life, but still hurts his feelings. But meanwhile, all these girls apparently were flirting with Chris and he was getting their phone numbers and stuff. So that's probably partly why he seemed like Barney Stinson. Um, so there's this idea of being concerned about Driving after you're drinking, being asked to drive to another location where people are going to want to continue to drink. Um, people who are pushy and not taking no for an answer and things like that. Um, so I think this is a suggestion that all of that 
that incident at the Matador was a setup, both probably with Courtney, who I think is, you know, highly involved in surveillance. The only way that the Dandy Warhols could have possibly gotten anywhere, and I'm not saying that they're not talented, but the only way any band from Portland could have possibly gone anywhere would be to compromise themselves into this system tremendously. This is just the only way. I mean, it's, it's actually shocking that the Dandy Warhol made it as far as they did because there was such a blacklist over all of Portland in order to simply bury Chris. But this was a little, you know, this was after the, the death of Cobain that the Dandy Warhols came out, became known. Voice speaking, that's a grudge against my mother. I don't know who, what that means. Four track demos, recording from a four track onto a tape, sense of dogfish studios in the fire. It was in 92 or 93. So a lo local studio where Chris was doing records burnt down a whole bunch of tapes from a whole bunch of Portland musicians burned up in this fire in either 92 or 93. I know that somebody could, fi you could find this online. Some people have written about this. Um, one of Chris's albums burnt up in the fire and had to be re-recorded. Re um, but recently, part maybe part of the reason why this came up now is recently this guy that's connected with the Seattle and Portland music scenes, maybe more Seattle, not sure, lives in Shanghai, China, has lived there for years, maybe even decades. His name is um, Eric Danielson. Um, in insinuated really obviously that um, Drew Canulet of Dogfish Studios burned down his studio for the insurance money and burned up all these master tapes on you know along with it um, and that was a little conflict that happened on Facebook I guess around some posts that Chris made because then Canulet himself saw that post and came back at him so I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm, I have a feeling this fire was probably set somehow by someone, not necessarily the person who owned the studio, but fires are, seem to be pretty easy to pull off, especially since the fire department's compromised. Water feature near me, heart-shaped. There's nowhere to go. Something about imitating Barbara Eden characters like Jeannie. Number five, Fliver, Honolulu. I don't know where Jeannie takes place. The guy that she's, you know, her master is supposed to be an astronaut. Um, it might be Hawaii, but I don't know. Um, but I think maybe this is linked to the idea of using mind control to create female sex slaves, essentially. You know, fulfill male fantasies. Male dancers wearing pink. So it's like a big production, dance production, like Busby Berkeley style, houses in pink. 